Okay, so I want to jump right out ahead of this video just to mention a couple things. Uh, we're going to be upgrading a uh, 9 volt train regulator uh, to run 12 volts instead of 9, uh, basically is what it works out to. Um, and this is an increase in power of 77%. Um, it doesn't sound like it, but it is. Uh, remember that power is not voltage. Power is wattage. So the formula we're going to use this is a quick shortcut formula, which I always love. Um, take 12 volts, divide by 9, you get 1.33, and then we're going to square that. So it's going to be 1.33333 times 1.33333, and it comes out to about 1.768 something, another, whatever it was. Um, so it is a drastic increase in power, uh, and that is something I'm taking into account. I'm only going to run certain things at that voltage for a certain amount of time. Um, well, that was pointed out to me by uh, Bill Atkinson, and he actually shared that formula with me. It's not one that I had seen before in all my electronics books I went through. Um, you know, I am self-taught. I, I didn't have any formal training on all this kind of stuff. I just kind of learned on my own. I was homeschooled, so I learned things on my own. And the second thing is that any modifications you do electrically to any of your devices uh, do so at your own risk. I'm not, I'm just sharing my experience. These are the things I like to do, uh, little modifications. But I always have, uh, you know, some factor of safety in, in mind. <laughs> and I'll also mention that I've never seen it actually confirmed. I've heard so many people say, matter of factly, but, you know, without, I've never seen real proof of this, that Lego uses 12 volt cores for their motors. I don't have any way to prove this. Um, it's it's interesting. It sounds like something they would do just so your motors will last longer and, and those kind of things. But that being said, if you're overpowering your motors, you could shorten their lifespan uh, at the very least. All that being said, uh, let's jump into the video. This is a fun one, so let's get started. Okay, so we're at it again. Uh, this is my upgraded 9-volt regulator that I did um, a while back. Uh, it's a long video, but there was a follow-up that kind of showed testing and and, uh, and my thoughts after it was finished. Uh, so we've got a LM350 upgraded voltage regulator mounted externally, heat sink, cooling fan, and temperature sensor. And I use this quite a bit and it works really well. And it helps in some instances, like maybe you're running a bunch of uh, power function servos and, and things that they, they, they take a lot of current, but not even sustained current. Or if you just want to run a bunch of things, whatever, um, they work very well. And I had a thought the other day about increasing the voltage output just a little bit. Um, so, that, you know, this will give me nine volts. That's without a load. It does go down a little bit once you get a good sustained load on there. And so I've got all the parts here. So let's set these aside and look at the schematic. So this is what we've got. This is the formula that calculates the output voltage. Um, R2 is right here, 470 ohms. Uh, R1, or I'm sorry, R3 is 650 or 605, and then the rest are 463 each. And so by changing the values of these resistors, we can actually change the output current or the output voltage. I've already done the math here, uh, what I'm going to change. And I did actually make a spreadsheet after the fact, of course, after I <laughs> spent a lot of time um, trying to figure it out. And I just happened to have, um, these are 820 ohm, that's not gonna focus, there we go. Uh, 820 ohm resistors that I had at work. Um, I had a, you know, a package of 100 or whatever. Um, so I thought I would try to see how they would do. So to calculate what it's going to be at full speed, we're going to have to add all of these together from here to here. So just as a sanity check, let, let's do the formula with the way it is here. So we've got, let's start with 605 is the first resistor. We're going to add 463 five times. So let's just do that 463 times five. And then let's add the 605 and we are going to divide by 470. We're going to add one and then we're going to multiply by 1.25, 9.015, which is what we've got here, 9.02. And what I've found, what I want to do is replace these last three with 820. So we're going to do 605 plus 463 plus 463 
820, 820, 820. Now let's divide by 470, add 1, multiply by 1.25. 11.86 volts and that's close enough to 12 for me without having to purchase very specific resistors even the one they use here 463 and 605 those are very odd <laughs> values for resistors so i'm just trying to work with what i've got here and just for uh to one more thing let's check where it's at on the second to the highest setting so 605 463, 463, and then 820 twice, because we are not going to be bypassing this last one here. Divide 470 plus 1 times 1.25 equals 9.68, so about 9.7 volts. So that actually isn't far off um, from the stock train regulator. So I, I like that, that it's a, a, just a tad above 9 volts. And then we've got the option to go just a little bit under 12 volts. And you know, the rest of the circuitry here, I've, I've already gone over in my last video. Um, we're just gonna be replacing the diodes and the voltage regulator. This mod, you wouldn't have to replace them, but you might as well. Um, you're gonna be, I would imagine you'd be generating more heat. Um, like I said, the original, LM317 that's that's inner voltage re train regulator is only rated for about one and a half amps, uh, whereas this guy, the LM350, is rated at three amps. And before I get started on the conversion, I'm going to show you the two versions of the train regulator that I have found. Um, I'm sure there could possibly be more versions in this. Some may be externally identifiable and some not. So this one has silver screws. This one has black screws. And let's look at the LED. Oh. Ugh. Okay, so see how that LED looks. And let's look at this LED. And I don't know how much you're gonna be able to tell. This LED seems to light up more, whereas This one lights up more in the middle and not the like more the entire thing. It's kind of hard to explain. If you can look at it in real life, you can tell the difference. If you have some side by side, um, maybe you just need to look for silver screws. I'm not sure because this is why it matters. Um, they also have different color feet. This has black <laughs> and this has white. So let's open it up. Um, this one, the wires are disintegrating, so that's all gonna be replaced. But these are all the resistors here. This one, this one, this one are the ones we're gonna replace uh, for these diodes and then the voltage regulator here. And let's take a look at the other one. This would be much more of a pain. And this is the version that I've been working with so far on my other videos. Uh, let's go ahead and take this out and see this guy right here. That is a resistor network or, or ladder. I don't, um, I guess resistor network matrix. I don't know. Um, but it's actually, you know, from this pin to this pin is a resistor, this pin to this pin and, and so on. Um, and it's just a way to save on, on components. So there's actually only one <laughs> resistor here. And if I'm not mistaken, that resistor is just for the LED. So this one would be much more of a pain. Uh, and again, watch out for the grease. I just got it all over my hand here. Um, that's why I'm going to be working with this one again with silver screws. Uh, the more full LED, um, we can always just take it apart to see. Since most of this I've already done on camera, I'm not going to worry about trying to film the entire thing. If you know electronics, uh, replacing a resistor is not a big deal. Um, there were, you know, the rest of it, there were a few things I learned from doing it. So you can watch that video if you want. And of course, uh, all the videos relating to the 9-volt regular will be linked in the description. So I'm going to turn on the fans, crank up some music. It's really hot down here. <laughs> Get this built and I will return after that. 
Okay, so it's about an hour and 10 minutes later. Uh, the only reason I know that because I was <laughs> listening to the Command & Conquer remastered soundtrack by Frank Klopacki and the Tiberian Sons. I'd play you a clip, but you know, copyright, all that jazz. Um, so we're ready to test it. Um, I haven't actually finished, you know, um, I have, there's my heat sink, drill a hole, that will mount there, and I have to cut the plastic away a little bit. Oh, and I, I went with a black connector this time. Um, I might change this convention later, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I, I, I had already used red, yellow, blue, or yellow is, you know, a, a standard one, uh, and only have so many to work with. Um, so this will mount there. This should have just enough wire to mount there, and I need to get a screw to go through there. Um, and I was looking closely at the the fan I brought home, and this is the, it's a little different than the other one, and I kind of wanted them to match. I don't know. We'll, I might test that fan and see if it's going to work. Um, but for now, we don't need a heat sink uh, just to turn it on and see if it works. Um, so uh, this is a handy little adapter I made. Um, I use it quite often, just uh, the banana plugs or, or test lead um, to a Lego 9-volt connector. Um, we're reading VDC, and let's test it. Uh, where'd I put, yep, no. oh god, um, a lamp here just to have some kind of something on it. And if you don't know how electronics work, uh, they're based on magic smoke, um, and that's what makes everything work. Um, if you accidentally release that smoke, it will stop working. So we're about to find out here. Okay, we've got an LED here. So that's a good sign. We should be good to go. Uh, okay, first step, three volts. 2.86, so that's about right. Let's keep going, 4.18. It seems to be like a tenth of a volt higher. Five point, now we're getting closer, 5.38. 7.64, so this is the first that is higher. Normally this would be uh, about six and a half volts, so now we're at seven and a half. We'll go up one more step. 9.78, so that's right around where I calculated it to be. I had 9.68. With electronics, uh, the real world is not theoretical. <laughs> There's every little, all the resistance from here and there, and it, you know, it, it's always going to have a little bit of a uh, variance. And here we go. 11.97. That, I couldn't ask for that to be <laughs> any closer to 12 volts. That's great. Um, I'm pretty sure the power functions uh, motors can handle 12. And again, it's gonna start here, 11.98. And it is going to go down a little bit as we put a, a big load on it. So if I get this all together and put it on my pneumatic pumps upstairs, I imagine it, it will drop. Um, so I've, I've got this far with it. I'm gonna get all this finished up. I gotta get a couple more things and we will do some heavier testing with it to make sure Everything's on the up and up. Okay, so we're back upstairs. We got this thing all set up and ready to go. Hopefully the audio is not too bad in here. It's kind of echoey. That's why I normally don't film in here much. Um, but yeah, this has worked out really good. So right now I have it on the second to highest setting. Ignore the cat here. Ugh. Um, but yeah, so I don't think this is entirely accurate. I would say it's closer to 9.6-ish or so. Um, but that little bit of extra voltage definitely helps, especially in this case where you've got the um, pneumatic pumps. Uh, so I'll, I'll kick them on. I probably won't talk while they're on because it's going to be a little loud, but uh, it's a much smoother voltage delivery. Um, you can you can even watch, uh, you know, you've got the lamp here um, and also this uh, power when it actually goes to that too, but you can, it doesn't flicker quite as much and, you know, it, it builds up pressure a little bit faster. Um, but I'm not really going super crazy, you know, I'm not running the 12 volt here. I probably won't use that much at all, um, but I, I could use it with BooWiz motors, things like that. Uh, so let's kick it on and see how it does. So let's see, we've got our 
Pump. And that sounds a lot smoother than it did before. Uh, let's see, I need to... Alright, so that should start building up pressure. It, it goes through all 12 tanks, so it takes a while. <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's kick on pump two. And you could hear, you know, this drop a little bit, um, but you can see we're still getting above nine volts. And uh, everything's pretty smooth. You can see that lamp isn't flickering as bad as it was. Uh, with these linear voltage regulators, uh, you know, they're going to lose a little bit of voltage as you put more of a load on them. It is what it is. Um, so I've been letting this build up to about 25 um, before I enable uh, this pneumatic module. But you know everything runs really good, so I'm I'm really happy with this upgrade. And again, I have the 12 volts if I need it. But for the most part, you know that this, this will be fine. Um, so I I've still got my my old one here. Um, that is stock on the voltage But the if I make any more they'll probably be like this. This will be kind of a one-off for special projects Pneumatic pumps if I want to use Buas motors, uh, you know I could do that for a pump things like that, but I don't I don't want to go too fast with these you know <laughs> um, These are expensive. Those are the upgraded You know latest version of the pneumatic pumps So uh, they're a little more expensive, but but they work very well and they don't um, leak. They build up pressure very nice. So we're up to 30 now. Um, so I'm going to enable air one. Nice and smooth, or as smooth as, as this gets. <laughs> so I'm very happy with the upgrade. Um, I, it was just a fun project. This is the kind of thing I enjoy said this many times I'd be much better off using a switching mode power supply that delivers a steady constant voltage but this is more fun so this is what we're doing <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed um, I'm sure there'll be more projects like this in the future so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one and I just kicked off <laughs> uh, recording right when it happened but we hit 90 degrees uh, that's Fahrenheit but that's when the uh, fan kicks on and helps to pull off that regulator so very cool. By Frank Kri by Frank by Frank Kaplapi. by Frank Klepaki and the Tiberian Sons.